Thank you. We are headed into a new series this week and it's based on the Galatians. Um, I talked a lot about it on Monday, so I'm not planning on getting too detailed today. Uh, just as a reminder, in case you weren't here or even if you were here, the Galatians are the five categories uh, that is talked about in the compilation of Yoga Sutras about afflictions, hindrances, or obstacles that we can face. And there's a verse in chapter two that says, all life is suffering. And then after that, it concludes with, but suffering can be avoided. Okay, so it tells you a blanket statement, like you're going to suffer, but it can be avoided. And that is the ray of hope. And so from that ray of hope, then it starts to go through the categories. And the first category is kind of like the mother of them all. And the other four could essentially be also under this category. And it's called avidya. Avidya is sometimes referred to as uh, the unknowing or not knowing, uh, sometimes called ignorance. But if you break it down more according to uh, the Sanskrit, words included in it, it actually means not seeing clearly. So if we're not seeing clearly, it's kind of like the veil of illusion or the veil of forgetfulness. Um, we're all going through that veil of forget forgetfulness when we're born here because we forget our purpose, our power, and our past. Um, so this lifetime is all about trying to remember what that is, trying to get on the path, trying to recall that, see what you resonate with, see what you align with, and then moving in that direction. But that veil of illusion is something that's even in the own symbol. I talked about that a lot on Monday. Um, I also talked about the not knowing something to its fullest. And not knowing something to its fullest, I gave a couple examples on Monday. One example I would like to give today that just happened, we just had the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And, you know, there's always a gathering uh, at the memorial. There's usually some, um, you know, leader, sometimes the president that will show up and give some sort of speech. And I know that a lot of the families of the people who had lost loved ones we're really upset even more tenfold this year because it was 20th anniversary and they still had not given to the public all the reports. They're not being transparent. So if the government has done all this investigation surrounding it and not being transparent about it, it leaves a lot of unanswered questions. And that those unanswered questions are feeding the suffering of the people who have already lost their loved ones. They've already been in grief. So it's kind of feeding that, which is unfortunate. Uh, but there's other things that can come into play. For instance, my first husband, uh, we were high school sweethearts, we were together 16 years. I always thought it was unusual that his parents took care of everything for him. I remember when he got his driver's license. You know, I mean, we all have to have our parents when we go get our driver's license, but they did all the paperwork. He was an adopted child. He had been told his entire life he was an abandoned baby. He didn't know the truth. He wasn't an abandoned baby. He was an adopted baby. There's a difference. So, but he had been fed this, this truth. And so by the time we were getting married, we were 26 when we got married, I needed him to get a passport because I was like, well, we're going to Venice for our honeymoon. Sounds like I said, I'm like, we're going somewhere romantic. You need a passport. And he was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to call my parents. I'm like, do you not have to copy your birth certificate? Why do you have to call your parents for this? Like, it made no sense to me. He was like, they do all the paperwork. Well, they were doing the paperwork because they were hiding something, right? So I told him when we getting the passport, I said, just so you know, in the United States, it always has the state you were born in. And he was like, oh, I bet mine's going to be Alabama. Because his parents had gone to school in Alabama. They were from Alabama, even though we were in North Carolina at the time. Um, and I said, well, we'll see. Right? You, you don't know, so we'll see what shows up. It's in North Carolina. 
and we got the passport, which opened up the Pandora box of now I have one piece of information. And so I encouraged him to contact the state of North Carolina. I'm like, if you don't feel good going to your parents regarding the information, maybe you should just write to the state. And I helped him research it. We wrote the state, and the state came back with this legal paperwork saying it was a closed adoption state. They could not give him any information, but they would give him a little bit of information. The little bit of information they gave him was that his mother was 16 when she had him. She was living on a military base mm -hmm. with her boyfriend, who was obviously older. She had gotten pregnant and she disclosed in the paperwork they were both alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And because they were both alcoholics, they understood that they could not provide the love of the life that they wanted their child to have. And out of love, they were giving him up for adoption. And then it concluded with, your mother has died of the cirrhosis of the liver. She drank herself to death. She already knew she was on the alcoholic pathway, but then she gives up her baby for good reason. And then that was her downward spiral. So do you see the layers of suffering? Not only that, he kind of lost it when he found out this information and he left the marriage six months later, walked out. So there's layers and layers of suffering if we don't know the truth, we don't know the reality of things. So Avidya is about, if we're not seeing things clearly, it could be an illusion. It could be that we have forgotten. It could be that there's mistruth. It could be that we just can't see the big picture of things. So with the video, I want to remind you of the chakra series we just went through. In the chakra series, we talked all about changing our mind, changing our perception, gaining a broader perspective, getting an aerial view, understanding that sometimes the chaos is happening for good reason to lead us into something better, which I feel like <laughs> we're going through right now. Collectively, right? that's what's happening right now. We're living through it. We're living through a video. So there's that. Okay, there's our lesson. We're gonna go ahead and start preparation for the practice on our belly in crocodile pose. So you're gonna be prone, face down, feet apart, and the arms providing. A headrest. So just feel this pose and how we're kind of withdrawing from everything around us. Notice how protective this pose can feel because our heart is not exposed. Not facing up. Notice how reflective this pose can be. And I want you to take a moment to reflect on a moment in time where maybe you hadn't seen something clearly or you didn't have all of the answers or all of the truth or the reality. And how you might have spun off in one direction. But then in the aftermath of everything clearing, you actually saw that I read that wrong. I misunderstood that. I got carried away with fear. And I just needed to cleanse my lens. To see it from a different perspective, to gain a new reference point. To look at it from a different angle, to widen my perspective, or just to simply trust in divine order and divine timing and that everything is as it should be. So let's set our intention as we begin our breath work to clear out some of this avidya so that we're also equally clearing out some form of discomfort or suffering. The design of yoga and meditation is for this purpose. 
So breathe well down deep into your belly so you can feel it swelling into the floor as you inhale. Let it back away with less pressure on the exhale. So even though it's not a new moon or a full moon, we're going to be doing a moon salutation. A moon salutation was created just to be that, a moon salutation. It wasn't designed just for those phases of the moon. And it's actually a half moon right now. On your next inhalation, let's go ahead and begin to lift the face up. Slide your hands up underneath your shoulders. Pull the feet together. Push up to all fours. And exhale, slink back into extended child's pose. But we're going to keep the arms actively lifting and reaching ahead. The head can actually hover above the floor if it's too much to touch down. Stretch into the pit of the arms, into the top tissues of the chest because this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I want you to realize that poses that provide this type of stretching in this region is really good for promoting better breast health. This helps to cleanse and release some of the toxins held by the lymph tissues, the lymph nodes and the lymphatic tissues. Breathe well, breathe deep. Affirming here as you hold, I release now from all outer involvements into my own inner haven of peace. Inhale, rock that hands and knees. Exhale, curl your toes, launch into downward facing dog. When you launch back into your first downward facing dog, feel free to walk it out. Even if you want to stretch into your hamstrings and calves more, do so. Press into your palms and really lift your sits bones, bow your head between the arms. Drive the heart back towards your thighs. Take a cleansing breath as we're face down. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Inhale, walk the feet forward to the top of the mat. When the feet walk to the front, line up your toes as if they were on one straight line. Hinging from your hips down and over and down. Plug the feet firmly into the floor and ignite the muscles through the legs, stacking and structuring them into place, maybe hugging the belly in, but letting the head go. So we're allowing. Everything to kind of drain down towards the head, right? And in the head, we have two glands, pituitary in the pineal gland. Mandy, how do you say it? Pineal or pineal? Pineal. Pineal. Okay, thank you. Inhale halfway up. We have a doctor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so Inhale, sweep the arms to your sides and up. Link the hands together. We actually had another doctor in the house that corrected me because I had some pineal in class. So oh, yeah. he texted me and said pineal. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but I've heard both. So yeah. I just wanted to take you back. Round the feet. Up the one could be good. Lift up through your kneecaps, contract your quads, lift up through your navel, lift up through your index fingers. Exhale, you're going to curve to the right. And when you curve to the right, Notice how much flexion you're receiving in the right side body. Create a little extra lift in space there. Deep inhale. And then on your exhalation, you're going to step off to your left. You'll be facing Jen, this direction. <laughs> and your arms are going to splay into the goddess formation. So roll your thighs out and away. All right, now go ahead and hinge forward. Take your fingertips lightly to the floor. So not flat palms, not heavy hands. They're just here to kind of help. Notice when you dropped your hands down, were you able to also see the tailbone down? We're trying to basically get the torso or the trunk parallel to the floor. Plug the belly in. Just activating those hips. Now bring the left elbow to come and reside on your left thigh. Sorry, you can't see me, Jen. And then inhale, take that right arm out and up towards the sky. So you're adding in this twist. 
And remember, you don't have to always turn the gaze up, depending on the neck, how it's feeling today. Good, exhale, bring the hands straight down the center again. Light feathery touch in the hands. Now bring the right elbow over to the right thigh. Inhale, sweep that left arm out and up towards the sky. Getting in this little mini twist. Nothing quite major, but it's going to help to warm us up and prepare us for something a little deeper later. All right, inhale, go ahead and bring yourself all the way over to the left thigh again. But this time the right arm's going to go over the side of the face. More like a side stretch. Good, inhale, rock through center and sway over to the right, side stretch. Good, bring the hands back down to the center, light feathery touch, only long enough to turn your heels back behind your toes and to bow over and down to Pradharita Padottanasana. Let your hands slide back. Let the crown of the head attempt to face the floor. Notice if you're pronating or supinating the feet, rolling to one or the other edge, and try to equalize the distribution of weight. On your next in breath, I want you to take your hands to your hips or waist. Keep the feet heavy and slowly start to glide up. When you come to stand, rotate your right foot 90 degrees towards the front. Lengthen out through the arms. Take it out over the right leg, but keep your right leg extended. Good. Exhale, take the hand to the shin. Left arm reaches upward. Roll the right shoulder back towards your belly. Lengthen out through your ribs. Roll open through your chest, stacking your shoulders. Affirming here new energy and joy flow down to me. On your next inhalation, stretch the left arm across your ear. Push back into your left hip as you reach out through the left fingertips. Create that long linear line. Gaze down towards your right foot. Lunge the right knee just a bit to frame the foot with your hands or blocks, depending on what you need. Hop the left foot over, turn it in at an angle. Drive your right hip up and your left hip around towards the front. Now you can be on blocks with the spine extended out or you can have a bend in the elbows and drape down. No use choice. This can be a pretty intense stretch. Try not to overly force anything to occur. Take one last breath in. Slowly breathe it out. Inhale, lunge the right knee, but wiggle the left toes back, 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 back. So you're coming into this lower lunge. Our right foot is going to slide just behind the right hand, and it's going to turn out 45 degrees. Lower your left palm to the floor. We're going to do the easier form of silver lunge, reaching that right arm out and up. Now, sometimes we roll to the outer edge of the right foot as well as the back foot, but don't feel like you have to swivel today. Exhale, bring the right hand down. You're going to turn the right toes towards the left corner of the mat. Bring the blocks with you if you need them to lunge the right knee to move into Skandasana. So again, you may or may not need those. Holding Skandasana with your right knee lunging, but turn your toes, Mandy, towards the corner of the mat, your right foot. There you go. Yeah. Keep the right knee roll. Instead of allowing it to collapse into your right arm, 
roll it away from your right arm and extend your spine towards that side wall. Now we're gonna pull. So inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, drop the hips. Good, continue that momentum, lifting on the inhale and sinking on the exhale. Now walk your hands over towards your left foot. Let your left toes turn towards the back corner of your mat. And we're just gonna hold and breathe initially. Now start the pulsing. Inhale, lifting, exhale, sinking. Those long static holds can be tough. Well, they can be tough anyway, but really tough if you have inflammation in the joints or arthritis in the joints. And so the pulsing or motion uh, could be better for the joints instead of forcing them to have those long holds. Walk the fingertips towards the center of your mat. You're gonna heel toe the feet towards each other until you have enough space and distance to drop to squat. Ooh, I just got a big pop in my hip. <laughs> I got an echo up here, I don't know if you heard it. So we're gonna take the elbows to the inside of the knees or thighs, and we're going to push the thighs a little wider, and then the heel of the hands may actually come down more towards the base of the sternum. Now elevate your chest and the crown of your head. So as you elongate the spine, can you feel the hips more? Yes. Yes. I can't even get there. This is the more active way. Lots of good benefits from this pose. It's impressive that we all can actually do it in house too. One more breath. I know this can get tough but it's building us up for something. Bring the hands down. All right, heel toe the feet back apart for the width of Prasarita Padottanasana, but we're not gonna hold it. We're actually on the fingertips, extending out through the vertebrae. So we're not actually going to lower the head this time. It's actually gonna bring us back to stand. So hands to the hips, press through the feet and slowly come up. Good, left foot's gonna rotate 90 degrees. Thank you for being the leader over there, Jim. So <laughs> your chips, you guys are in the left way. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, extend out through your arms. Lengthen out over the left leg. Just follow Jim, she's got it. <laughs> Exhale, windmill down, triangle. Push back through the hips. Stretch out through your side body. Fan the fingers wide on the top hand. Most importantly, breathe. Energy and joy flow down to me. Take that top arm and reach it overhead. Push back through the right hip, out through the fingertips. Turn your gaze down. Before you do anything else, make sure the left shoulder and arm is stacked with precision over the thigh. If it's not, you are doing triangle a little bit off. Now lunge the left knee. Bring the hands down or use blocks, of course. Pop the right foot over, turning the toes inward for pyramid. Lifting the left hip, rolling the right hip towards the back side of your back. Staying lifted and extended or draping forward and down. Yogi's choice. So you guys know I have been nursing my left low back for like a year now. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, well, my whole pelvis was twisted. It was upsetting my SI joint. Well, I've been seeing a chiropractor for over six months now and it's helped it tremendously. But I went in yesterday and I was like, okay, it's, it's not even about the joint anymore. The pain still shows up, but it's more muscular and fascial. Okay. On your next inhale, lift your head up, start to lunge the front knee a little, wiggle the right toes back. 
And so I, he made me meet up with someone, slide your left foot back, turn the toes off to the left corner of the mat, drop your right hand down and sweep open to this version of Soma Lunge. So the guy that was working with me started uh, massaging really deep tissue into that area. And then he was showing me these stretches and putting me on this machine. And he said, yours is different than the other people I work with. He was saying it was the psoas. He was like, it's your psoas. It's so tight uh, where it's connecting to your low back. Mm. And he said, most people that have this problem are too sedentary and they've been sitting at their desk and they need to build it up. He was like, yours is opposite of that. So, right? So the chiropractor had just told me um, kind of something similar. He had one recipe for it, but the expertise in the fascial said something different. Turn the left foot, right? Seeing things clearly, avidya. Now we're gonna step the back foot forward to the left. Fold down to your Uttanasana, you're standing forward. Fold. And you bow over and down. Close your eyes. Go inward, be introspective. Focus on your exhalations. Inhale, circle the arms to your sides and up overhead. Lace the fingers together like we did earlier. This time you're going to curve to your left first. Chandrasana crescent moon. Inhale, rise to the top. Exhale, you're going to curve over to the right. Christy, if yeah, yeah, you're going to be the leader. Okay. <laughs> sure. Inhale, let's come to the top. Exhale, step to your left. You're facing the front door. When you're facing the windows, you're coming into the same Kali goddess that we did earlier. Come down to rest on your fingertips. Dig a little more into the hips. Notice if you're swaying the low back or letting the belly go. Plug the belly in for support. Cross the left elbow over to the left thigh. Inhale, sweep the right arm up towards the sky. This time you're taking more of a twist, maybe gazing up towards that hand. Exhale, bring the hands down through the middle. Notice this one isn't as intense as the first one. The muscles are complying. Bring the right elbow to the right knee. Inhale, sweep the left arm out. Maybe gaze up. From here, use that left arm to sweep up and over to the left, rainbowing over into your side bend. Inhale, rainbowing up and across to the right side bend. And then coming down to the fingertips, heel toe the feet a little closer, drop into squats. Okay, so Chrissy, you may have to look back to see me a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use I'll face this direction so everybody can see. You're pushing the left arm into the left knee and then stacking onto the fingertips. Yes. And then inhale, the right arm reaches out. <laughs> Feeling it? Okay, bring the right hand down. Push into the right knee, stack onto the fingertips. Inhale, lengthen that left arm out of that. I know, we're going to get out of it soon. <laughs> Exhale, hand down. Now we're going to exit. Turn the heels back behind the toes. Make that wide stance through the legs and feet. Bow over and down. And this time you have the liberty to choose whatever you want to do with your arms. Because there's a lot of different variations to this pose. I'm keeping it simple. I'm just going to do the same one we did earlier, but feel free to express in your body where your intuition is guiding you. All right, hands to the waist. Inhale, gently come all the way up. Turn your right foot 90 degrees. Lengthen out over that side for triangle pose. When you're ready, strike it but we're doing something different. We're gonna spin the top hand 
and we're going to loop the left arm behind our backs. Left shoulder rolls open. Keep the neck in line with the spine. Inhale, elevate the left arm again. Exhale, lunge the right knee. And you're just going to turn away from your back heel. Feel free to bring those blocks in. Oh, you guys face the front now. Oh, no, 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 you're right. Sorry. Now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was expecting you to be looking at me, but that's not the case. We're not there yet. Lunge the knee. Straighten the leg. Lunge the knee. Usually, if I'm not recording, I can hop around the room. And it's less confusing. So, sorry about that. All right. Once you lunge the right knee again, we're going to press the uh, thigh down with the right hand so we can elevate the belly. Take prayer hands and twist to your right. Revolving side angle. You can follow Jen. So if you turn more to your toes on that back foot, Mandy, it'll be easier. There you go. Yeah. And you may have to walk it back so the heels up like a lunge, like you're getting ready to sprint. Well, I have long legs more than the rest of my body. Well, that's I feel like a big bird. <laughs> All right, exhale, unwind. Turn your right toes to the corner of the mat. You're facing the windows again. You're in Svandasana. Do a few little pulses up and down. Crouching tiger to the left. Lunging the left knee, Skandasana. Keep pulses to that side. Keep rolling that thigh open so you're benefiting the hip. All right, when you're ready, walk your hands back through center. Lower the head, but we're going to come back up. Hands to the waist. Slowly rise to the top. Turn your left foot 90 degrees. Lengthen out through the arms, over the front leg. Windmill down to triangle. Spinning that top hand, looping it behind your back. We're going to need this openness of the shoulder for a pose we're going to work into soon. Inhale, radiate the right arm skyward again. Exhale, gaze down, lunge that front knee. So you can set your hands down to the floor or block, spin away from the back heel, push through the ball of the left foot once you square the hips to straighten out the leg. Form of standing split, and then exhale, lunge the knee. And you're just going to go back and forth between these couple postures. Once you relunge the knee after that third round, stack your left hand on your thigh to pick yourself up. Elbow to the outside of the front knee, hands to prayer, rotate left. Good, exhale, unwind. Take the hands down. When you're ready, step the left foot to plank. We're gonna do this first. We're gonna go through the vinyasa. Holding your plank, exhale, knees, chest, chin, ashtang, pranam. Inhale, untuck the toes, lower your shins. Bloom the heart through and up, shoulders back. Elbows in. Find the height your degree where your glutes are firm, your back is strong. And then hearing the affirmation, repeating the affirmation internally, I rise joyfully to greet each new opportunity. Exhale, lower to the forehead. Inhale, push up to all fours. Exhale back into extended child's pose. 
So again, we're stretching the underside of the arms, the pits of the arms, the top of the chest. Breathe well here. On your next inhale, rock up to hands and knees. Exhaling, downward facing dog. When you arrive at downward facing dog, let your head just release between the arms. All right, we're going to be hopping or just stepping, okay? You have a choice. So hop or step. The feet forward and behind the hands to either side of the mat, returning to your favorite pose of squat. <laughs> Everybody's favorite. So we're going to lift up the tailbone. We're going to hook the left arm around the leg. So the back of the hand is kind of sort of towards the thigh, hit low back wherever you can reach. All right, from here, take the right arm, circle it behind your back. You might be able to clasp hands. Don't worry if you can't, okay? Your right foot is gonna heel toe over towards you a little bit. And then you're gonna come to the mound of the left big toe, the tippy toe rather. And this may be all you can handle today. So don't feel like you have to go up. But if you're prepared to push into the right foot to straighten the leg to come up to Birds of Paradise, you can try it. You don't have to straighten the left leg. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're ready to come down, tiptoe back down, lower the left foot, remove the hands, come back to squat. So just stop it anywhere along the way, okay? Inhale, tailbone lifts, hook your right arm. Back of the hand coming towards your outer thigh or hip. Left arm circles behind your back. The left foot's gonna heel toe over and the toes face the front. You're lifting the right heel, stepping the big toe over, discovering whether or not you have the confidence to rise. Whenever you need to lower, try to come out the same way. And then take your feet wide to either edge of the mat. Okay. Bend the knees. Stack your hands. Shoulder distance apart. Squeeze the elbows down and in. Lift your head up. Once you have your arms engaged, your hands properly placed, Elevate your heels, bring the knees towards the upper arms. You're not done yet. You're going to tip forward more, a couple inches, until your feet get wider and want to lift to crow. Exhale, come down again. Land to your seat a moment. So I thought I would give you a moment to maybe determine whether or not you would like to use a wall for crow. Because here's the trick. I taught this pose yesterday in a different space and half of them weren't familiar with the pose or couldn't manage the pose. And as I was watching as an onlooker, this is where people were getting stuck. They were either getting stuck with the arms, not knowing how to get them in that proper alignment. So it's kind of like shot around the arms. They were lifting the heels and getting here, and then their head was dropping. If you drop your head, you're more likely going to descend because the head's heavy. The third mistake I would see, once I got them to lift their head and get their knees in place, was not tipping that extra little bit in order to fly the feet up. That's the scary part. 
right? That's the part, the first, I'll be honest, the first time I ever did this in the studio, I was brave. I was also 26, <laughs> which makes a difference, right? You're a little bit more fearless at that age. And I went flat on my face on a wood floor. Ooh. Didn't hurt myself. Luckily, I hit my brow instead of my nose. And then we all laughed at it. I was the only one that fell out. <laughs> and but then it taught me a lesson. I went home. I practiced on carpet. I got pillows out to put under my face until I figured out how to lift and hold it without the fear of falling. And I did that before I did, ever did it again in the studio. So I have no problem with you bowing out to do your practice at home first to build up your confidence to do it here. But I do want to show you a way to use a wall. And then if you want to try it, you can turn around and try it. Basically, think about where the head is, right? We're trying to keep the head up. So what we're going to do is use the wall for the head. So we have some support here where we're not going to have the fear of falling forward. So my back's going to be to you guys, but you guys in the studio, you don't have to, you might be able to see here. And I've got to measure it, right? Oh, I measured pretty good, actually. Do you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I'm using the wall for support, so there's no fear of collapsing. Also had to have my arms in the proper position. If you don't have your arms in the proper position, you can still potentially collapse because you want this to be your foundation. So if you want to try it real quick at the wall, your head would not be automatically at the wall with your knees tipping to your arms. Because remember, you have a couple more inches to go. So you just have to play with it and measure it and see what works. You have to walk me through it. This is the first time I've ever done this thing before. Okay, so your hands would be shoulder distance. I think they might have to be farther back towards you. Closer together, even. And then your own feet. Hips are up. Feet forward so the feet are more flat. Yeah. Now, then your elbows. Scoop them in. Good. Now lift your heels and see. Now, see, your hands are going to be farther back. Really? Yeah. Because that feels so unstable. And you don't have to do it today. Well, right. I'd love to figure out my just, you know, I'm just how it feels. You know, if I can figure that out. So you have to do the arm like that. And then shift forward. Yep, yep, yep. And then <laughs> I'm you're getting close. I know, but I'm not close enough. There you go. There you go. Oh, did you, did you finally feel the wall? No, I mean, barely. Not enough okay. support. Okay. Enough to like go shoot. Too much space there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So another, um, work on that just a minute. Another one that I have seen I don't like this one as much, honestly, because it's teaching you to look down. Oh yeah. I don't like that one as much yeah. for that purpose because if you're teaching them to look down, then they're not going to keep their head up. But this is another way to somewhat use a block like a wall, but also as a point of balance right. where you feel a little bit more confident, comfortable lifting with that. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. The block. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. Do you ever use the block? No, I've done my feet on the block before. Yes, yeah. And you can also stand on the block. Hmm. Do you want to show that one? Because I'm not as practical. Do you, do you mind coming up here? So Jen's going to show you another way, <laughs> and then I'm guessing it's, I've done it before, I just don't practice it. And so it just forces you to get the hips up super high, because uh -huh. I feel like that's where I'm struggling sometimes, and the hips have to get up really high, and then the belly. 
Yes. It's huge. It's all core. You think it's your arms, but it's not your arms. Because that's what I core. But when you push with your hands and work your arms, yeah. it naturally ignites the sure. core. You don't have to think contract your core. Yeah. It, it works together. I think when I got into it, when you were walking us into it, my, my thighs were just like this. I mean, I had, by the time we got to this point, yeah, they were shaking. Just, yeah. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I didn't trust my body to be fluid enough to flow into it because these right. guys were like, yeah, you know, as I was trying to get into this. And yeah. the pillows down to, like you were talking about when you practice at home, I will say that's just, I think helps with the mental part. It is. So a bolster mm -hmm. in front of you is sometimes all it takes. Because you're yeah. you're providing a soft landing right. just yeah. in case. Just in case. Okay. That removes yeah. that mental barrier. Yeah. Show then you can figure out the physical part. So show me the arms again, like where I'm supposed to be. So it's just like um, you know when you're a kid, you did this all the time. So just let me show you this. Look at Chaturanga. It's the same, it's the same position right. of Chaturanga arms. So like the elders are back doing it, in. you're just doing it here, hand shoulder distance apart, elbows roll down and lock in so that the knees take rest. Yeah, and then <gasps> that's it. Look at you. Oh, I just can't keep it. That's okay. Good. Yeah, like you started to look up, and I was gonna tell yeah. you, like, you're so I was thinking, it's a, it, yeah, hard not to crash. Yeah, yeah. you look up. I realized that. I'm like, no, yeah. you can hit it. Yeah, okay, I gotta stop again. Okay, all right. She did it, you guys. <laughs> yes. Not for a millisecond, but still. A right. millisecond still is the pose. It's yeah. like, you're doing yeah. it. I honestly feel like when we're here, yeah, and here, we're in the pose. Yeah. This is the pose. You're just not balancing without your feet. Got it. But you're doing everything else. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. That's my philosophy. Okay. I'm good. sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna do a final spinal twist. I know we got a little heated, but that <laughs> yeah. builds up some fire. That's the core. There you go. Inhale, lift up energetically. Exhale, spin to your right. Close your eyes. Turn and radiate my love, goodwill, compassion to soul, friends, everything. Exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale, send to your mind. Visualize the same kind of pulsing that we were doing up and down in Skandasana. Imagine a similar pulse radiating out from your heart. Imagine it sending waves of your beautiful essence and light out into the world, affirming and radiate my love, goodwill, compassion. To soul friends everyone. And next one. All right, bring your legs forward, heels ahead of your knees. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, slowly sweeping through the belly. You're gonna roll it down. Once you roll down, separate your hands. Bend your knees. Your arms can actually fan out like a T if you prefer. We're going to do a different twist today. The right ankle is going to cross over the left knee. You're going to roll down to the outer edge of the left foot, lowering the left knee to the floor and the right sole of the foot to the floor. So the right knee stays lifted. Okay. Now you can just stay here or you can use your left hand to press the right knee and thigh farther away from your heart. Some days that feels good, some days it doesn't. Some days I don't feel like 
I'm taking anything extra from that, which is today. So I'm letting it go. And how you're gonna come back to the sole of the left foot, keep the right ankle crossed over the left knee, but now you're gonna roll to the interior side of your left foot. And now the right foot is working like an anchor to pull the left knee towards the floor. Or just adding in a little bit of weight to it. Now this is gonna stretch out that left side of your low back but I want you to explore something else. Lengthen your left arm alongside your left ear now. If it's not pleasant, leave it out. If it's pleasant, breathe into that sensation. Bring the left arm down, roll back and uncross the right foot. Now, hook your left ankle over the right knee. First, roll to the outer edge of the right foot, down to the right knee. Sole of the left foot with the left knee elevated. So each side may be different. So just explore. How does it feel if you use your right hand to push that left knee away? That feels good or better, or you feel like you're benefiting somehow? You can continue that, otherwise you can let the hand go. Inhale, roll back to center. Now roll to the interior side of the right foot. Weighing down that knee with the left ankle or using it like an anchor, making it even heavier. Now send your right arm up alongside your right ear. Exhale, release the right arm, unroll the twist, and now hug both knees in. So pause here and notice how your low back feels and what you may personally need. Maybe this is it. Maybe stacking the hands to the knees and circling them around several times one way and then the other to massage the low back. Maybe you prefer separating the thighs, taking stirrup. Perhaps you prefer going right back into the hips and taking happy baby pose. This concludes our physical practice, and we're going to set up for Shavasana. So you may just want to slide your legs out and apart. You may want to slightly tuck the shoulders under. You may prefer using props, bolsters, blankets, blocks, whatever you need. Remembering our theme for today, which is the beginning of the Galatians, talking about a video. What means not seeing clearly, not knowing the absolute truth of reality. Now, this includes not being able to see clearly that we have an infinite part of our nature, a divine spark within us. And so this is the practice for Shavasana, to go in, to dive deep, 
to recognize and to realize we are so much more than mind and body. We are the seer that looks at the seen. And the seer is the inner witness. So let this be in practice now. Fog off the sensation feelings or thoughts. Just watch. Breathing above the breath. Turning over to one side and resting in the side fetal position a moment. The postures were created to work out the kinks in the body, to strengthen the body so that you could sit still. Basically, getting the body out of the way. In the practice of the mental focus involved in the postures, the breath work, the affirmations for helping to plug positive thought patterns, it's all of this designed to help to clear and calm the mind. 
begin to prepare us to sleep. Shavasana being the practice to determine, to re recognize we are more than mind and body. There's so much more. And in sitting in stillness, you connect to that true essence. You recognize you are connected to source energy. There is something that unifies us all. And meditation helps to cleanse the lens of our perception so that we can see things more clearly. So those veils of forgetfulness and illusions and ignorance are lifted slowly but surely. Let's sit for a moment together in silence. My soul recognizes your soul. And that is what I choose to bow to here and now. Totally forgot to add in half moon on the second side, but that's okay. I felt like we got a lot. We got a lot in. <laughs> So I'm not concerned about it, but I told you at the very beginning we were doing half moon and then oops. Okay. <laughs>